pasks of pen hen. Um, this bed was one of the first that was planted. It's brassicas intermixed with onions and leeks um, and got some lettuces in there. So most of the broccoli's already been picked, um, sprouted. I'll leave some to go to flower for, so I can have seed for next year. We've got chard in here. So this is Ford Hook Giant, which is huge. Got some black kale some rhubarb chard and some curly kale. The lettuces, so I've got um, winter density, Lolo Rosso, and there's a butter head there I've had, which I think I've finished now. So the lettuces I've been picking once or twice a week since the mid since mid May. So they've they've done really really well. Um, I've got some greyhound cabbage in there which are heading up nicely we've already had one of those probably got another one ready to pick and a little cauliflower if we can find it there you go i'm not brilliant with cauliflower um i've put some more on for autumn cropping winter cropping because it turned hot and everything went to flower so the second row We've got cottagers kale, really old variety of kale. This is soybean. So when they fruit, we'll have Adamame beans from those. Some outdoor cucumbers, more pretty sunflowers. This bed, which has been, you know when you've got a husky because there's a big hole in the bed. So we've got some red kale got a swede that's just about ready to come out there um, there was spinach there which the dogs led on some perpetual spinach some more black kale curly kale this was the first lot of beetroot now which is nearly all finished probably pick the last of those today because they're, they're drying out now it's been so hot um, most of this bed was transplanted from Caffili, so there's some odds and ends of chard that I put in, which it's got some sort of rusty thing, I'll pick all that out for the chickens. In this patch we had all the early broad beans which are just coming to an end now, I'll pick those off later and we'll have those for tea. So you can see the size of the chard, that's the Ford Hook Giant Leaf. So my slippers, size six. So it's um, quite large. Here's my parsnip bed. And we've got, between the rows of parsnips, I've got onions. So there's white onions. There's the red onions I've done better than white onions this year. The parsnips are a little bit droopy today, but they're the biggest leaf I've ever grown. Some of them are like four foot tall. So we have row three of garden beds and a butterfly. So here I've got the runner beans. So if you've seen the videos before, you know we had a frost at the beginning of June. So all the beans were killed, all the squash were killed as well and the sweet corn. So these are the second plantings of those but they're starting to do really well. We've got some baby beans coming, so probably about three days they'll be ready. They'll have a good water tonight. Um, I've got a few different varieties of bean, which I was going to separate and keep as separate varieties, but I think I'm going to let them cross pollinate so we have a pen hen variety because that's what the place wants. It wants its own variety of plants that are well suited to the soil into the climate here. Um, we've got some little baby squash. So these are all butternut squash in here with all my cosmos flowers. So this bed I've grown in the Three Sisters method. So that's a, basically an ancient um, Aboriginal American method. 
So you grow sweet corn, you have beans growing up the sweet corn, and you have squash growing around the bottom to shade the soil and act as a, a living mulch. So we have more butternut squash and there's some vegetable spaghetti there. These are full-sized sweet corn. Um, some of them are just starting to grow the little baby shoots that the sweet corn will actually grow from because they're starting to get their little flower spikes at the top. The beans that are growing up them now, these are an amethyst, so a purple bush bean, French bean. Um, they go green when they're cooked, but they look pretty in the plot. It's, um, I was concerned about how well all this was growing, but in the last couple of weeks, oops, it's all gone crazy and is looking really, really good. So these are mini sweet corn that are in. There's no baby side shoots growing yet, but they will. More squash here. So we've got some disco, some crown prints and some other varieties that I really can't remember because I planted loads of varieties of things just to see what would, what would work and what wouldn't this year. Um, I did have everything labelled, but then with nearly everything that I had, the writing wrote off the label, even though I wrote it in permanent ink. So it's, um, it's a bit difficult knowing what's going on. So these are Bellotti beans. The idea of having so many flowers about is one, it not only looks beautiful and smells beautiful here, it really attracts the pollinators in and they're used as sacrificial plants so hopefully any bugs that come in will predate the flowers rather than your veggies. So the first Bellotti beans are going all nice into pink. Pretty beans. And then this bed was literally, it's just odds and ends of brassicas that I had left over. I just stuck them in. So we've got, got some sprouts, we've got some calabrese, purple sprouting broccoli. Oh, that's a nice greyhound cabbage. Another one there. Sprouts. Um, some kale. Don't know what you are. Is there any writing on this label? No, see? All labelled lovely, but absolutely no writing whatsoever left on it. Good old permanent markers. So these are collard greens, which is basically just an open cabbage. Really tasty though. If you like cabbage, it's strong cabbage. And we've got some, some swedes growing there. Just starting to get to a decent size. So this is row four of beds. So most of these haven't got the best compost. If you've seen some of the earlier videos, you'd know that we, we got some compost in and it basically is like builder's rubble. It's rock hard and really dry. So these I, I water as much as possible been able to water for a couple of days so here these are crown prince squash down here if I put my my slipper so you can see what size they are already so these are going to be ready end of September, beginning of October. So they'll probably be sort of twice that size by the time we get them. This bed, we've got purple sprouting broccoli. There is intermixed here. We have, this is celery growing, which is starting to come Nice. Now, I've never grown celery before, basically, because Dean would never eat it, but he's decided he likes it if it's cooked now. So, I'm growing celery. More purple sprouting broccoli. This side, there's celeriac. 
Um, it's not doing great again because of the soil, but it is just starting to form some heads there. And we've got some scarlet kale. This bed, more purple sprouting broccoli. Sam loves broccoli. So we've got lots of that. These are purple sprouts. This is all our curly kale. So all the brassica beds are interplanted with either and or leeks and onions. The idea of that is it will keep the white fly, aphids, green fly and things away a bit. Hopefully. Hopefully. So the final brassica bed in this row, we have more kale, swedes, got a romanesco broccoli there. There is a squash of unknown variety. Um, this I didn't plant in that bed, it just appeared. So your guess is as good as mine what this one's going to be. But we're starting to get one there. Find out what it is when it's mature. Red cabbage here. So the cabbage is, the, the, all the brassicas have done amazingly well. This, this cabbage is about two, three foot high and about the same wide and it's outer leaves so doing really well this is perpetual spinach that we can't actually pick fast enough and eat fast enough and i've got some savoy cabbage some more swedes on there some more savoy cabbage some little dibs of lettuce this bed is more runner beans so one of the beds is going to be runner beans for picking eating his green beans this bed i'm going to keep and dry the beans to use them as pulses during the winter and also for seed storage in here we've got some vegetable spaghetti and some more butternut squash um, the idea for having so many squash is one that they store really well we love them, can use them in, we have a lot of curries and stir fries, so we'll use them in there. Um, roast them, soups, pumpkin bread, delish. So in here we have more parsnips. Now these are the thinnings from the parsnip plot that I've just put in. Um, I did this on the allotment last year and they, they grow pretty well. They're a bit wiggledy, but they're not going into a fashion show. They're going in my tummy, so it doesn't really matter. Some later peas. Now, this is the way to grow peas and how I will be doing it going forward. So, got a nice sturdy fence with aggy wire. So, all these beds now are mostly over to calabrese. So, yeah, yeah, broccoli because my son loves it so we'll be doing lots of broccoli we've got also there it looks like a doggy dog has been on the kale naughty doggy some cabbages in there as well we've got some autumn lettuce or some late summer lettuce just starting to grow had a couple of pickings off of that some red cabbage more so this squash which needs letting out of its little cage here that's 100 weight squash some of these squashes are grown for becky for her her halloween decorations got some more um celery and celeriac in here as well three big rows of broccoli calabrese another squash that just decided to grow in the path no idea where that one came from naughty butterfly trying to get into the into the last low of row of calabrese and these have got savoy cabbage an atlantic giant 
and some kale and some red lettuce.